Hey YouTube, this is James with Last Hard Games. Today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to answer the question, are video games a good investment? I see this question come up occasionally from people just getting into collecting. They want to know if they buy video games today, can they sell it for a profit later? Let's dig into the data and take a look. We're going to be working with game prices from pricecharting.com. They publish their methodology on their website if you want to review how they do what they do. But for our purposes, we're just going to assume that their data is accurate. We're also going to assume all purchases and sales are happening at the listed price. If you find a copy of Earthbound from your uncle for a nickel, yeah, you're going to make some money. But we're going to focus on buying and selling at the listed price. We're also going to cut down to just the pieces that we need. We're going to remove systems, controllers, and accessories from our dataset and just focus on games. We're also only going to use games on the four major console brands, Nintendo, Sega, PlayStation, and Xbox. We're going to also exclude newer homebrew games, like games released for the NES in the past 10 years. We're going to focus on North American releases only, and all prices have been adjusted for inflation. Finally, we're only going to look at games that sell at least once a month or more. We're going to be keeping the average collector in mind and assuming that they aren't going to be able to get a hold of rare and frequently sold games. This rule passes what I'm calling the Earthbound test. Loose and complete in-box copies of the game are still included, but new in-box versions are not. To determine what's a good investment or not, we're going to use ROI, or Return on Investment. ROI is basically profit divided by the cost of your investment. So if you buy a game for a dollar, and after a year it sells for six dollars, that's five dollars profit divided by your one dollar investment, so you're going to have an ROI of 500%. But if you buy a $500 game and it only sells for $505, you're going to have a 1% return on investment. You make the same amount of profit, but the $1 purchase is a better investment. So let's look at ROI for last year. For games purchased in January 2019 and sold in January 2020, this is what the distribution of the ROI looks like. Basically, it's pretty split down the middle. 54% of sales had a positive ROI, 45% of sales had a negative ROI, and 1% of sales had an ROI of zero. So it's possible for games to gain in value, but piling everything together just doesn't give the best outcomes. So let's look at a couple of breakdowns of this distribution. Before we look at the charts, let's go through a quick primer on how to read box and whisker plots. Here's an example. The central line is the median, right in the middle of the data set. The edges of the box are the upper and lower quartiles, so the top and bottom 25% of the games. And the edges of the whiskers are the minimum and maximum values, excluding outliers. Basically, what we want to see is the median line being the positive side of ROI. With that out of the way, let's get to it. Nintendo and Sony look really similar. Nintendo handhelds appear to have a decent ROI. Microsoft is not so great from an investment standpoint, but Sega consoles are looking good. But let's look at this another way. This is the same breakdown, but by video game generation. We can see that the most recent generation has a terrible ROI. But the older you go, generally, the better it looks. This is why Sega was so high in the previous chart. They aren't making new consoles, so they aren't pulled down by modern releases like the other brands. So we see an effect that appears to be related to the age of the game. So let's take a look at the average price by game age. We can see that right when a game launches, the price tanks. But as it gets older, the price slowly climbs back up. One thing to note is that the sample size gets smaller the older that it gets. That's why you see so much volatility in the older games. So how do game prices look in 2020 so far? We've seen a significant shift in ROI from last year to this year. Last year, 54% of sales had a positive ROI. From January 2020 to May 2020, 71% of sales had a positive ROI. Even breaking down by major brand and by generation, it is an increase across the board. So what's going on? Why is this so different? Well, the answer is COVID-19. Since the pandemic started, people started staying at home more. And the current theory is that demand increased. People bored at home are looking for ways to spend their time and video games are the answer. So what does this mean? Well, personally, I'm not planning on buying any used games anytime soon. I don't know if these prices are going to stick or if they're going to go back down after time, so I'm fine waiting it out. But if you have duplicates in your collection or games you don't care about anymore, now looks like a great time to sell. 
But what about when things get back to normal? How can you best optimize your return on investing in video games? Let's take a look again at the prices of games by age. The best way to optimize your return is to buy at the right time, when it's the lowest. For new games, the low point price comes about 7 years after the game's release. For complete inbox and loose games, that low point is around 10 years. But frankly, I wouldn't suggest buying loose games at all. It would be better to spend the few extra dollars for a complete inbox version at the time and see a higher return later. Finally, let's watch this change over time for complete inbox games. Each dot on this graph is a release year in video games. Highlighted are 2013, 2003, and 1993. As we move through time, you see 2013 drop in price, 2003 slowly gain in price, and 1993 rise over time. The key takeaways from this video to really get the most out of your collection are don't buy games at launch. They drop in price so quickly, and the high starting costs will actually diminish any future ROI. Buy new games at 7 years old and don't open them. 7 years appears to be the age low point and opening your game will immediately make it drop in value. Buy complete inbox games around 10 years old. And just don't buy loose games. They're not going to see as much of a return as new and complete inbox games will. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments other questions you have around video game prices. We could dig deeper into identifying specifically what kind of games have the best return and if we can predict which will be our best investment. Or we could identify more around the COVID impact on prices and really quantify what that impact is. Let me know what you think. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more.